The reading of files external to the database via external tables is really, I suppose, just the first step on a journey toward talking to the operating system. The, the, probably the most common requirement is that we have some data, because it's a database, that's outside where we'd like to have it. Therefore, an external table offers a hook to it. But really, this is just a subset of the larger problem of I want to reach outside the, the, the shell of the database, so to speak, to get access to things that are only available normally at the operating system level. Historically, talking to the host or talking outside the database is a hard thing to do. And don't get me wrong, this is a good thing. The whole reason we have databases and database platforms is such that they are insulated from the operating system. You really shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too easy from a database to go hooking into things in the outlying server because it's the same reason why browsers don't have access to the file system on the PC you're running it on. It's a security risk. We don't want errant code in the database going out and just destroying things on the operating system layer. It's generally a bad thing. We've always had facilities inside the database to do it. And this is what we used to do probably in the earlier versions of Oracle. And you can still do this. If you wanted to, for example, run a host command on the operating system, which the database doesn't natively do, you would actually have to write some Java. Using the inbuilt JVM that comes inside the database from 8i onwards, so 25 years onwards, you could write a routine that has a create or replace in there, but you're actually creating a Java class inside the database. This is an example from Ask Tom, which basically implements a little Java utility to run a host command. It runs the host command that you pass in as a parameter, and then it spits out the output from whatever comes back uh, from the standard out. It's a bit of complexity, but you could run it. To get an idea of how much people want to talk to the OS from the database, that question and that answer on Ask Tom has over 50,000 views since we ever published it. So people want this facility. But the reality is writing Java for most database professionals isn't generally their cup of tea. We write DDL, we write tables, we write queries. Writing Java inside the database uh, is often frowned upon and people have had problems with that routine as the JVMs have evolved over the years. It's just another layer of maintenance you have to take care of. But let's take a look at the pre-processor option for an external table. In this case, this is a simple one. I'm simply decompressing a compressed file. At which point people go, hold on a second. I wrote that host command. That wasn't some command that came in the database. I wrote that little batch program called decomp.cmd, which simply does a gzip minus, you know, to un uncompress a file. So if that's my file doing gzip, well, surely I can just ignore that and put any kind of programs I want, whether it's Unix shell or whether it's Windows command file. The moment the database is hooking out to an external program that is authored by myself, I can put anything in that preprocessor option, surely. And that's true. This is huge because this is now that ability for the database to, in a nice controlled fashion, get access to operating system facilities simply by the power of external tables. If you can script it, if you can script something up and put it in a batch file or a shell script, then an external table will be able to exploit it via the preprocessor option. Let's look at an example. What if from inside my database, I want to see how my server disk utilization is going? As DBAs, often we'll write routines to look at DBA free space, DBA data files, etc., to see how full our table spaces are getting. But that doesn't tell us how much they can extend by on the underlying file system because we don't know how full the disks are. First of all, I need an operating system command that will give me the information I want. So I could do something like a little script here called run df which unsurprisingly runs the df command and spits me out some information like that. That is something I'll be able to use as a preprocessor option to grab via a standard table. So we take another, we've got a file system, some blocks used, available capacity mounted on, and it's delimited out there. So let's now build that into an external table. Here's my external table definition. I'm gonna call it df. We've got the file name, the blocks used, available capacity. They're just the normal columns. Now we need some way of hooking into that bash program we had. So I've got a default directory called execution directory. That's what my script is called. The preprocessor option is execution directory run df. I've chosen to skip one because the first line that comes back from my df command is just the headers. 
the file system, the used, etc. I don't want those tags because I don't need them. I just need the raw data. And when you nominate an external table, an external table must always point to a file that exists, otherwise you'll get an error. But in reality, I'm not really processing any files here. I simply need the external table definition in order to run that preprocessor option. So what I've done is I've nominated my location as the same name as the execution file, simply because I need some file that already exists, doesn't matter what it is, in order to have my external table definition correct. If I had an empty file called you know, dummy.data, I could use that as well. By using the name of the executable option in my preprocessor, I know that that file must exist, otherwise I wouldn't be able to run my preprocessor option anyway. But then I query my table, and there you go, literally via SQL and an external table, I now have the disk utilization. I could now do some comparisons between those file systems and my data files to get information about how well my system is traveling. But there we have a select statement which is actually running host commands.